News 46 is brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. News is also brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight on News 46, firefighters respond to two home fires. Several accidents occur over the weekend, and the lighting is held for the community Christmas tree. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Monday, November 30th, 2015. We hope you had a wonderful holiday weekend. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. For News 46. An allegedly distraught female reportedly lit her own bed on fire on Thanksgiving morning in an attempt to kill herself, according to police. She then locked herself inside her vehicle in close proximity to the home that was now on fire. We caught up with Fire Chief Scott Lewis to find out more. We had a report of a structure fire. In fact, we responded and found heavy smoke and fire with fire venting through the roof. There was also an uh, off-duty volunteer from our department who was in the immediate area and reported that there was a female locked in a vehicle in the driveway and was not responding to commands to leave that vehicle. Sheriff's office arrived, confirmed a working structure fire and uh, removed that person from the vehicle. And that patient was then medically evaluated and later transported by the medic unit to Desaview Hospital. The crews commenced the fire suppression. There was closely located uh, multiple exposure structures, including an RV and other fixed structure and a detached two-car garage, which had numerous personal property stored within. And as uh, crews commenced to an interior attack, they quickly controlled the fire. As suppression was underway, we received a verbal report over the radio from the sheriff's office indicating it was an intentional act by that person that was uh, earlier removed. And um, so the sheriff's office worked diligently and had secured uh, the necessary information to effect an arrest. So there was possibly psychological issues? Uh, can't rule it out and as part of the, um, the medical evaluation that was being conducted at Desview Hospital. The other structure that was behind the main house, there was people inside there too, and they didn't want to leave either? It was an occupied structure. There was an older female residing in there, and she was uh, re reluctant to leave that immediate area. But with uh, the fire conditions and the fact that we were going to be controlling the power to the property, it mandated that she would uh, temporarily leave. We did restore that service to that property, and she re-entered probably within the hour. Tell me about the animal inside the structure. There was a reported, uh, I think, one dog? Uh, we didn't have any canines or anything like that, but an um, exotic bird was removed out of the back of the residence. We're not sure exactly at what stage that what removal was completed. But there was other on-site animals, and none of them were affected or impacted by the fire. And another home caught fire Saturday afternoon off Basin Avenue. We were just clearing a motor vehicle accident rescue assignment. We were dispatched for the report of a structure fire in Union Pacific. As we were en route, we were informed that a, the reporting party, which was a neighbor, saw visible smoke and fire coming from what they described as a single-wide manufactured dwelling. Upon arrival, we found numerous vehicles, personal property, structures of all different sorts and types, occupying about a two-and-a-half-acre prop, you know, parcel property, and we had um, heavy smoke showing in the middle of that property. Crews made their way back and found that what is actually described initially as a single Y was actually a converted motor home that was now being used as fixed structure. Um, crews found heavy smoke with fire venting uh, from the doorway and they effected an interior attack, a modified interior attack due to the type of construction also within this physical location within the property. And they made good effect and quickly controlled that fire with no extension. Primary and secondary searches were completed. There was no one found in the structure, and there's actually nobody on the property at the time. The owner then came back shortly thereafter, probably about an hour or so. And um, we believe that that fire was accidental in nature, most likely related to an ignition source of electrical. 
So <clears throat> you guys did a primary and secondary search because you thought that there might be somebody inside that home. We could not rule it out. There were so many structures on the property, and with the front door open as it was, and it had been set up with a swamp cooler, it had been set up with a number of other things that would give everyone the impression that somebody could have been you know, residing there, not necessarily full-time, but even on a temporary basis. Heavy equipment had to be utilized to remove an occupant from a vehicle on Highway 372 following a two-vehicle collision. It's just west of uh, Prompt Valley Boulevard on Highway 372, there was a two-vehicle accident. It was a Psy, what we would commonly refer to as a T-bone type accident, with significant intrusion onto the one vehicle. It was approximately almost two and a half to three feet intrusion. Significant impact. We found that driver was met, uh, physically and medically entrapped in that vehicle. Uh, and our engine one, uh, which is also capable of rescue, went into service with a, the Jaws of Life, which are our hearse tools, and they did a driver's side door removal and we removed that patient. We were going to transfer that patient to Mercy Air, however, Air 21 was unavailable to us. So that patient was subsequently transferred to Desview Hospital. And then possibly airlifted from there, right? It's possible. I don't know if the hospital, what their mechanism was for transporting that patient further to trauma. Was there anybody else injured? Uh, there was one person evaluated, but they declined medical treatment. It appears that the road crew was a little late in replacing the stop sign this morning at the intersection of Calvada Boulevard and Dandelion Street. Lack of a traffic control device appears to play a role in the cause of this accident. Shortly after the collision, workers replaced the sign. Dispatch for a report of a motor vehicle accident. It was also reported at the time that there was one person who couldn't get out of the car. So we treated it as a rescue assignment. We upgraded it myself and uh, the medic and the uh, rescue engine responded. We in fact found a T-bone type collision at that intersection, significant damage to both vehicles. However, the driver of the one vehicle who is initially reported to be trapped crawled out through the passenger side window prior to our arrival. Sure. All right, let's talk about uh, the stop sign. What, what was going on with that? There was a initial concern on the location as, it, as we pulled up on the intersection. There was a um, lack of traffic control even for us arriving on scene. It was found that one of the stop signs had been displaced. And uh, so we had to be, use extreme caution as we were approaching the scene from Dandelion on the Calvada as well. And as we were there, obviously the county came in and placed a temporary stop sign up for everyone to be, be safe. So it probably was knocked down by another driver or what? You know what, there was construction in the area, so it's uncertain as to how that uh, stop sign became displaced. But in fact, that's what it was, and it may have precipitated the accident. The sheriff's office was investigating that aspect. When we return, your Desert View Hospital health tip.